20 years ago, Cornell and Richie Moran won the very first NCAA championship. He added two more titles in 76 and 77, and in 83 was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Nine-year-old Roy Simmons Sr. received that honor in 1964. Tonight he has a chance to watch his son, Slugger, win his 200th game at Syracuse. But despite winning four national championships, he is yet to be accorded the highest honor in this game. Super Sports, a production of Cook Cablevision of Syracuse, presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Tonight it's the Big Red of Cornell meeting the Orange Men of Syracuse. And what a week it's been for traditional lacrosse rivalries in upstate New York. First it was Syracuse and Hobart. Tonight, Syracuse and Cornell. And Dale Dry Pulcher, Syracuse has won the last four games in this series. And you know they've scored 52 goals the last two games out, but it's really the defense and the faceoff domination that's led Syracuse to victory. That's right, and Pat McCabe leads a very, very tough defense. I think uh, every coach that comes in here will tell you when they say, uh, what do you worry most about Syracuse? It's that defense, and of course, Pat McCabe, the leader of a very, very tough Syracuse defense. And he's back there on defense, uh, helped out by uh, Eric Holbrook and John Winship. Maybe those other two people don't throw their weight around like some Syracuse defenders of the past, but they are getting the job done. I think they're just still getting their feet wet, uh, starting roles. They played a lot last year, but I think they're feeling more and more comfortable. And as they feel more comfortable, you're going to see them play with a little bit more uh, of abandon, and I think that really helps the Syracuse defense. Well, of course, we won't have any snow in here today, but Cornell's leading scorer is named Snow, John Snow. Well, John Snow is an excellent athlete. He's an attack man. He's got 13 goals, 18 assists, so he can dish the ball off also. But he's obviously a key for, for Cornell's offense and it'll be interesting to see which one of those defensemen picks up John Snow because, as we said, he's a key in uh, Syracuse defense, so it's strength on strength there. Cornell lost its top five scorers of a year ago. Now let's talk about face-offs. Syracuse totally dominated Hobart. Bob Fazy won all ten of his face-offs. Gil Martin was very strong in that department, too. But Cornell thinks they have a, a two-headed face-off man who can win a few for them. Well, Goldman, 34, is the guy that does a lot of their facing off. And the thing about Goldman and the thing about Syracuse is they've seen each other a lot. They tape the games, they look, and uh, despite what they say, they're always at each other's games. So those guys are looking to see if they can get an edge. But you're right. The game starts in the, in the X, right in the middle of the field. And if anybody's going to establish tempo, which both coaches have mentioned, they got to do it right there. So let's watch face-offs as a key for tonight's game also. Let me hit on that point. The game appears to be so free-flowing and so freelance, but there is a tremendous amount of scouting and strategy that goes on. It's behind the scenes almost, and we can't always pick up on it, but the coaches are so aware of who's on the field, who's off, who's doing what, and they make all sorts of changes that really don't come into, uh, into view. I would call them mysterious matchups, things that they see when they see like number eight goes out there. They want number 13 on number eight, and we don't even know it, and uh, they do a tremendous job of Xing and Oing, both coaches, especially Richie Moran's got a reputation for that, for doing a lot of different, unique things, so that's going to be interesting to watch Richie Moran tonight also. And we'll be back with the opening face, the Big Red and the Orange Men. Coming up from Super Sports. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome for the 75th meeting between Syracuse and Cornell. The Orange Men leading in the all-time series 44-29 and one tie. The series began back in 1920 and there are the Big Red. Huddle around Richie Moran. One more. Here is the attack for Cornell, John Snow. Steve Gray and Scott Burnham, whose brother played at Syracuse. John Bussey, Joe Lando, Chris Reynolds in the midfield. John Goldman will be the faceoff man and may see some action. Pat Leahy, Tim Lee, Frank Marino on defense, and Tim Shea will be in the goal. Kevin Donahue shaking hands there with Richie Moran. There's Roy Simmons, Jr. Kyle Federley, the equipment man, back on the sideline tonight. He's had to do a lot of moving back and forth from the Manly Fieldhouse Complex to the Dome with construction there. Jamie Archer, Matt Ryder, Tom Marichek, the high-scoring Syracuse attack. Midfield with Ricky Kramer, Charlie Lockwood starting for the second straight game. Tom Gilmartin, the faceoff man who's out there now. McCabe, Holbrook, Winship, and Dino Lorenzo in the cage. Here is the opening face of the game. Tom Gilmartin out there for Syracuse. And coming over is Han Schmidt, coming in from the wing with a big stick, losing the ball, losing sight of it. And Ricky Kramer is there, taking a hit. And he's knocked out of bounds. And if that's any indication of what's in store, it should be quite a game. Alexander, 33. Nice shot. Knocked the ball out. And Cornell will get the first scoring opportunity. 
And the big red with Pat Leahy. And they get it in now to 21. That's John Bussey working it up toward the box. Mike Doyle providing defense. Cornell with the first settled situation of the game on offense. Open to the near side is Snow. They don't go his way, however. With it is Burnham. They feed the crease for a quick shot that's wide. It came off the stick of Steve Gray, number 44, with a big knee brace. And they say it's Syracuse ball. Defensive midfielder was in there, Patane, Doyle, and Moore for Syracuse. They'll check out as Syracuse has to clear the ball. They try to get it up. They're still changing people. Both teams are. Lockwood comes on at midfield. He takes a hit. Down he goes. The ball comes free. Two big hits already by Cornell here in the opening minutes. And the Big Red have it again. Tony wow. Morgan applied that hit. Got the ball back for Cornell. Once again, it's Dan Alexander, 33. Carrying it in with a left-handed stick. Coming in for a shot. And there's DiLorenzo eyeballing it and outletting it to Pat McCabe. McCabe with Patane to his right. And he gives it to Patane. Two he big gives sticks. it back to McCabe. Overrunning it there is Ricky Kramer. And Ryder picks it up and sends back up top to Patane. He wants to give it up. That's why he looked behind him. He wants to get out. <laughs> and they want to get McCabe back on sides and get Amaya in at the midfield. So Amaya goes across for Syracuse. And Lockwood also comes in. Now Lockwood comes on. He'll be in your picture shortly, number 22. There's a move being made by Kramer. Being pushed back outside by the uh, Cornell defense. Actually, Tom Mets Benson. There's a nice step through move by Lockwood and a good save by Shea. Rebound, Kramer, and another save by Shea. And the ball is loose out in front. And Benson has it. Knocked out of his stick. Recovered by Cornell. Failure to advance. What's no, the ball? hit him in the head, I think. Let's see. Illegal procedure. Let's see, perhaps a pick. That, that right there, he just kind of glanced. That's just a brush, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Illegal procedure, so Syracuse gets the ball back. Starting to put a couple shots on number 20, Shea. And they work the ball now in a clockwise manner, and from behind, Jamie Archer deals it. Freddie Amaya with some early action. Up top he goes to Lockwood. Lockwood down to Kramer, back to Lockwood. He's got a very hard shot. Amaya, is, Cornell has really packed it in defensively. Jamie Archer's had 27 points the last three games. Lockwood can't get free for the shot. Into a crowd, Kramer loses. Lockwood has it. Amaya and Archer. We're running a kind of a zone. Cornell going to get their sticks up. Yeah, zone defense. Lockwood fires the laser, and it just missed. Trying to knock down the passing lanes, and it's not really a man-to-man, -man, and they're really getting top. Amaya with a point-blank shot, and the goalie Shea got that. It's still Syracuse ball. Amaya gets over, hustled 24 there. Marino for Cornell, but Syracuse was there. Zone defense early against Syracuse. Steve Bettinger comes on now for the uh, first time of the game. We're three minutes in, and we have no score. Kind of a change from what we've become accustomed to seeing. Archer. And they get it to Lockwood again. Now Amaya, uh, Bettinger. Up top, they try to feed it. Goes through, heading toward the sidelines, and it is out. Cornell ball. Really sagging back in and trying to protect the goalie. Shea and keep their sticks up, knock the ball down, and Syracuse, an errant pass, will give possession back to Cornell. Big Red coming off an easy win against Notre Dame, and they cheap this ball downfield and out of bounds, intended there for John Snow. Snow's the leading scorer, 13 goals, 18 assists for 31 points, but he was nowhere near that ball. Shea, a nice wrist action, but the ball over Snow's head, and Syracuse will now have to clear. Last time Cornell won in this series, they won twice in 1987. One of those in the national semifinal game that was held at Rutgers. Now Syracuse wings it down to Ryder. Ryder feeding it to the middle. That's Gil Martin ridden off the play. He had the big game against Hobart. Jamie Archer in the role of feeder. Intercepted on the pass intended for Ryder, who had another shot to pick it up and missed. 
But the outlet is on the ground. Snow and McCabe. McCabe prevents him from getting it. Allows teammate John Barr to go back and scoop it up. On the ground ball, he dumps it and overshoots Don Finn. You can see that there is going to be an offside call made right here. And that's going to go against offside. Cornell. No possession. I don't, I don't believe. Let's count. Three, six, seven. No, no possession. So that'll just cost him the ball. But, Dave, they are really contesting every ground ball. People really hustling and hitting. And, Dale, look how far they're packed in defensively. Yeah, and watch. See the sticks up? They're trying to prevent the passes. Zone defense. At least it starts out that way. My memory is correct. They did this very effectively early last year for nearly a half. Yep. There's Gil Martin from outside. Another save by Shea. The theory is, Dave, is to try to get shooters like Syracuse a little frustrated with his zone defense, and then uh, they take poor shots or you force a bad pass. There's no reason for that bad pass. It just happened. Off of Syracuse, be Cornell ball. But that's the theory there. Frustrate them, try to get somebody Take a poor shot and then make the most of your opportunities. Take the face off out of the game early. Remember last year down at Cholkoff, uh, Matt Palem didn't play, did he? No, that's right. Remember, he had that bad knee. Lehigh was in the goal, and wasn't that the game when Greg Burns got injured early? That's right, yeah. He was limping, went out of bounds there. A cold night also. Very cold. Well, we're five minutes into the first quarter. There is no score. Incidentally, Snow uh, has been given a defensive assignment of McCabe. Here's a move and a low shot. and Lorenzo had a beat on it all the way off the stick of Chris Reynolds and the outlet to McCabe. They're going to ride him. He'll redirect it to Lorenzo. He's got to get rid of it. Journeyed outside. He bloops it down the sideline for a big stick. That's Holbrook. Holbrook. Uh, he gives it up. And here's Tom Marichek. Boy, we haven't even mentioned his name yet. Marichek faking a couple of times, dealing it back. Can you imagine that? Five minutes into the game. Here's Ryder. Got the nice feed inside from John Barr. And Syracuse breaks the ice. Make it Matt Moore on the assist, number 33. Well, Ricky Kramer had uh, they had one of the big sticks go back on sides. And Kramer was across. Syracuse was actually outnumbered down there when they scored this goal. They got the ball over and then just a quick over the shoulder, a little bit of a leap. And... Ryder's going to pick up goal number 13 and goal number one for Syracuse. Face off is still being contested. Who's on the wing over there? Is that Kramer? Let's see. Push. Yep. So that's going to be Syracuse ball. You know, Dale, I was a little surprised to see that pass come from Matt Moore. I saw a three on the jersey. I thought for sure it was John Barr. Matt Moore has just picked up his first assist of the year. one nothing Syracuse. Six minutes now into this first quarter. They're sending, they had number four, Ryder, down on the attack. They moved him off with, now they got Archer behind. Bettinger to the near side, he has it. That was Marichek who picked it up. Archer, good pass in the crowd. And Cornell breaks it up, but Marichek good out hustles. Hustle. Cornell to the loose ball. Now Lockwood. Oh, oh. fed it into a crowd. Oh, that's a cutter. killer. That's a killer. When Ryder went in there and and Lockwood made the pass. Those Cornell guys are kind of sunk back in, and boy, when they see the ball, they rack, come out and go after that ball. That was Ryder making the identical move uh, that he scored on a couple of moments ago. Cornell has won more games here than any other visiting team. They've won twice. Cornell kind of a three across, and they got an outlet man up on the wing, number 21, Bussy. And he may get it. Oh, nice check. To burn Reed, number 15, overran it. Cornell had it, and that's going to draw a flag. Tough call. Eric Holbrook doesn't like it, does he? On Holbrook, 43. They're going to call a push. And watch 43. That's, that's the push right there. That was a good call. Joe Lando hit the deck. So Syracuse, Syracuse. Uh, huddled up quickly in this man down situation. So first man up opportunity for Cornell. Thirty seconds. Well, 
Bornell has been uh, successful 20% of the time in these man situations, and they're successful right there. Bussy. And we're tied at 1 1. Bussy's going to be up on the left as you look at it. He's signaling for the ball. He gets it. They slide out, try to pick him up, but they can't get on the stick. See that? They can't get the stick up on the stick. They're a man down. They slide over, try to cover the body, but he does a nice job of scoring goal number one. Man up situation for Cornell, one for one. And a man up department. Syracuse says they pop it out. That was Fazy. Syracuse dominating the faceoffs, but this game is tied at one. Andy Boland coming on for the first time. Ricky Kramer being challenged outside by uh, Tony Morgan, number two. Now Lockwood has it. You can see Syracuse not really in their kind of game offensively. Being forced to play in this uh, half field game. Here comes Jamie Archer from his behind position. He fired that one on. Bolin looked for the backhand, but there was a whistle prior to his shot. Stay this way, white ball. A lot of picks being set down there, and Kramer 13 was free. And you're gonna see the there's the there's the push, but watch, you're gonna see 13 come across and break free. Just at the end, there's the shot went off. But Syracuse, ooh, trying to get back. That's right. Or uh Ryder Ryder, yeah, and scoring. Yeah. Matt Ryder gets his second goal of the game. He's had a high of six this season. And Syracuse takes back the lead at 2-1. to one. Syracuse goal by number four, Matt Ryder. Matt Ryder, the guy who plays, lists as a starting attack man, but he spends a lot more time out as a midfielder, and he just right-handed it on a high shot right by number 20, Shea. Not sure Shea ever saw that one Not his soon reaction. enough, Right, not soon enough to, uh, to knock it down, 2-1. to one. We look at the face-off department. Syracuse has got him shut out at this point, three to nothing. Gil Martin out there now. It was Fazy the last time, there's the big stick. That Schmidt, good philosophy there, put the big stick up, but Cornell gonna come up with it eventually. Look at that. Has anybody got possession yet? McCabe was there last. He Tra was all over Bussy. Travis Lamb was 38 in pursuit. Good look at the study face of uh, Richie Moran. He's all business. Yeah. At midfield now, Dom Finn for the Orange Men. Finn looks to go one on one, gets a step on his man, fires and scores! Dom Finn scoring for Syracuse, and that is his sixth goal of the year. And it's a 3 1 Syracuse lead. Watch Finn now when he comes here 26, as he gets closer to the goal, he's just going one on one. And he beats one man there. Now they start to collapse on him. There's number two right here. And then this man's going to slide. And you let it go. And then he slides. Stop it. And you see right there, three guys on Finn, but he was able to put it by. It's just a nice single move, one-on-one, -on -one, and ended up three guys tried to take Finn. Good power move. So what the uh, defender did there, he tried to... Uh Put the head and the shoulder into the midsection of Finn, who just lifted up his shooting uh, arm and fired it right over it. If you will check as you see John Desco talking, you're going to see the USILA poll, and um, it's really a lot of scrambling. You look at Syracuse number seven, Cornell 14, okay? Make the playoffs, I believe 12 teams make it, but everybody tries to scramble and get as high up as they can. Cornell's problem is they got Brown, who's an Ivy League team, ahead of them. They also have Princeton ahead of them. So they've got to work on their, their Ivy League championship and win a game like a Syracuse game to, to get their ranking up there. Syracuse, on the other hand, knows they want to continue getting up on those rankings for that home field advantage. And obviously, you got to maintain that winning edge. And Cornell will finish out its season against both Princeton at home and uh, Brown on the road. They've already played three times in the Ivy League. They beat Harvard 8-7. to seven. Lost at Yale, 12 to eight, then lost at home to Penn, 13 to 11. That's a costly loss. And you look at Syracuse, what they have, uh, they have Rutgers left and some other teams, but the teams that are ranked ahead of them, they don't have much in the way. They don't certainly have uh, Princeton or Brown. 
There's McCabe. There's the senior, Emeritus, I guess you would have to call him. Nice man, always here watching his son and his grandson also, who is one of the coaches. Dale, is there a uh, requisite that a Western team be in the uh, championship tournament? You know, I think there is. I, I think that they qualify whoever the Western champion is. I, I think in the past it, it was been Michigan State and um, uh, Notre Dame, uh, perhaps, in, in that particular There's arena. Nobody, nobody in the top 20 from mm -hmm. out west. No, I know. I think they're trying to, obviously, what they're trying to do is, is, is make it a little bit more meaningful tournament and get the people from the west involved. Gil right Martin now, Gil with Martin, his speed about just, to win that face off. And look at that change of direction. Here's his shot, and he scores. He did it all by himself. What an explosive player, Tom Gilmartin. We talked about uh, the tempo in the game, Dave, and you're going to see right here, he's supposed to be the stronger, but watch him pop the, see him pop the ball out right there. Now watch what he does. He's going to scoop it up, left-handed. Now he looks, they're trying to slide. He makes one move there, a little split dodge. Heads, takes the shot, and right there, you're going to see, stop right there, guys. He got the... Got the stick down, not able to get it down in time. Well, almost. He goes right back to the faceoff again. And Richie Moran pulling Dan Alexander out of the game after a faceoff violation and talking to him on the sideline. Well, there was a delay of game. They weren't ready to go at the allotted time, so Syracuse will, again, get another faceoff, and it goes to 5-1. to one. Once again, the faceoffs echoing or mirroring the score. Four to one is the score. Six minutes to play in the first quarter. Nice stop and go, change of direction. Cornell still packed in on defense. Now Gilmartin staying on, going to Ryder and Marichek. Now they're back to a man-to-man -man now, defense. Here's Marichek working one-on-one. -on -one. So Leahy trying to dislodge the ball. Ball is down behind. Marchek drew the double team and got knocked down. Now Cornell trying to transition and not having a heck of a lot of luck. That's a pretty good example of that. And they answer back. That'll, that'll stop that. That was a push or an illegal check. <laughs> Looked like Gil Martin was the man who got dumped. Yeah. That was push 30 seconds. And you're going to see the, the, the push. It's... Morgan. Right, right there. It's Morgan, but I was going to say it's right there on Gil Martin. And any time a push is defined, if you send somebody in the direction he doesn't want to go, and uh, boy, he really knocked it backwards there. So Syracuse will now be the man up. Oh, and a flag flies on the sideline as uh, Dan Alexander walked on the field. Another 30 seconds. They're going to. And here's Alexander coming off the field. He was the man who was uh, involved in that face-off violation moments ago, pulled out by Richie Moran, sent back onto the field, and as he did, we had a flag fly. He said illegal team personnel action. I'm not sure exactly what the call was. That was the signal. It's 30 seconds. Syracuse has the ball, and they have an extra man. Yep. They two, have four, two five. Extra yeah, they're, men. they're two men up right now. So this is real zone up time. Get your stick up and hope that you can knock the ball down. Just like, like that. that. Yeah. Yep. Great play right there. Get it down in the other man's offensive Travis, box. Travis Lamb. Oh, he doesn't have possession. It rolls dangerously in front, and DiLorenzo gets decked by Lamb. And another steal by Cornell as they come up with Leahy. Taken back by Syracuse. It's wild. And the Orange throw it away. Intended for Gil Martin. Still two men down. Cornell is still two men down. I don't know how much time is left. Now they're back at full strength. Yep. I didn't see possession in the box. I didn't see it designated, but it was. So that will give Cornell their two men back, and they're right back at even strength. A year ago, Dale, we might have seen one of the gates just carry that ball all the way in in a situation like that. That's right. Cornell is down 4-1. to one, And we get an offsides oh, call. Nice. Joe Mars on the penalty. And that's going to cost Cornell not only possession, but a really 
is going to cost them a chance to get back in the game. Four to one is not a bad score down by three, but momentum has gone Syracuse way, and not only are you going to give them the ball, I think you're going to give them some momentum. Well, this is some of the coaching we talked about. Right. That may not be all that evident to either uh, of us up here or to the viewers at home, but it is going on constantly. And McCabe brings the ball across. Now he'll take the big stick back over and get Lockwood over. And now Ricky Kramer, number 13. Obviously not superstitious. Freddie Amaya is on. Jamie Archer. Marichek working hard, working hard. Firing and scoring. That's Leahy, 43. Watch the, uh, the stick of Marichek. Leahy tries to take him right there and watch. He's going to do a dodge. He does a roll. Now watch where the stick ends up when he takes the shot. He's going to roll back into him. Now he's got Leahy moving. Leahy comes. You see that sidearm shot? Perfect example of a sidearm shot. Marichek whips in goal 22. Tom Marichek has seen his scoring lead leadership uh, be overtaken by Jamie Archer coming into this game. 5-1 is Syracuse's lead. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Burnham played by Winship. They got a short stick on Snow. Terrific move. Uh, that's going to cost McCabe. See it was John get. Bussey went low. Yeah. They're going to give him a technical on a push. So 30-second man-up opportunity for Cornell. Richie Moran said before the game, uh, his team was not going to play a defensive kind of game trying to get Syracuse away from doing what they want to do. He said, we'll just play our game. But when asked, what is your game? He says, well, it changes from game to game. <laughs> and he said he's also generally pleasantly surprised and has been all the season as they improve from game to game. So they're only down by four at this point. This is an important man up situation. However, you've got to convert this. They did score earlier. Yeah, another man up. Oh, they tried to feed it. Tried to and feed Syracuse, the. Syracuse uh, was Win there to break it up. Chris Reynolds, 23. And there's Winship going over the top and knocking the ball out big of the play, stick. Big play, big play. Steve Gray. We talked about McCabe, but Holbrook and Winship. Holbrook 43 and Winship 39 just do a great job. And there's a good example of it right there as Winship took the momentum away from Cornell, gave it back to his team, gives them an offensive opportunity. They got to clear the ball, and Lockwood is going to take it. Did you see Jerry DiLorenzo come all the way over to congratulate Winship? Uh, DiLorenzo has been looking very, very, very tough. Oh, right a crushing hit against Lockwood, but he gets right back up. Burnham hit him. That was one of the best hits of the year, of many a year. Man, he got right back up. Mike Levine, number three. Now the substitution going on as they get people in and out. Lando in, 22. Syracuse gets their short stick out. They get Patane in. He's so, going to have to defend against Steve Gray who's coming on. Along with uh, John Bussey. Cornell is down 5-1. to one. We have 2.45 to go in the first quarter. And Stratton, nice move. DiLorenzo came out to double team. He got burned doing that against Hobart. Well, he did it intelligently there. He came out but had his feet underneath him. Dave went right back in. And he cut down the angle. Winship applying the defense now on Burnham. Pope checking Burnham. There's Burnham still with it, drawing uh, the company of Winship. Yeah, now they're going to have to make sure they pick up the other man. They're going to have to trade off now. Who's going to pick up Burnham? Winship goes back, and Holbrook comes out. Nice defensive play applauded by the Orange fans. Nice defense. Joe Lando, 22, giving it up, and the crowd loves it. We're under two to go in the first quarter. Well, they're playing good midfield defense. Kramer did a nice job there of covering. And now Stratton's in. 31. Oh, they and got there's a right cutter, there. but DiLorenzo had that shot played. Yep. Burnham on the backup, beating DiLorenzo to the spot. You know, it's hard to, they're not screening DiLorenzo. He's got good vision, and he's making a good jump, Dave, when somebody makes the move. He's got a good jump, and he's moving well with a stick. 
They have to go way up top now to Lando to start the offense again. Patain poke checking. He lost the angle. Now they feed it behind and they give it back. And there was De Lorenzo. You saw him get a stick on that shot. Red. Red and it's going to stay Cornell ball. Good, tough defensive stand for Syracuse, but you got to give Cornell credit, Dave. They are really monopolizing play, but they've got a, a lot of time. They're going to afford to be patient. A symphony of whistles. What do we have? Moving pick. Joe Mars picked it up and puts him down. <laughs> Richie didn't say a word to him. He's just looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> that said it all. That said it all. McCabe now pops McCabe it over the top. a little blooper to yep. Kramer. Ricky can change directions on a dime. And, and playing good defense. There's Freddie Amaya on the move. Dave Schneid on him, 36 from Cornell. Pushing Amaya with that bionic knee brace on the left leg. And the move from outside by Finn, just high in the back up there provided <laughs> by Archer. <laughs> late, but uh, not too late. Jamie turned just at the last minute. He's going to take it from behind. Syracuse is leading in this game in the final half minute of the first quarter now, five to one. Here's Kramer with that change of direction. Lost the angle for the shot. Feeds Finn to Amaya. Oh, he had the nice whole net to shoot for, and he shot it high. Nice look, good backup now by Marichek. So Syracuse putting on an offensive flurry of their own. Shots 13 for Syracuse at this point. Now we're down to 15 seconds. Here's Kramer again, trying oh. to turn his defender Morgan. Morgan gets the ball to fall out of the stick. Here's Archer trying to scoop it up. Doesn't have time to get the shot away, and that's it. Tommy Gilmartin throwing his body as the first quarter comes to an end with Syracuse playing very good defense and leading Cornell by a score of five to one. They got him. One of the new rules this year is that the official that mandates the officials shall conduct random stick inspections on players of both teams at least twice a game. And what they did is they grabbed John Snow's stick from Cornell and a, a stick from Syracuse player, and they're checking. Now they're going to put the ball in to make sure that the pocket's not too deep. So they're trying to obviously discourage the concept of players doctoring their sticks. And uh, I think it's a good rule. And as they, uh, they give the stick back, uh, they say everything's okay, and they move on. Jimmy O'Hara and company doing a good job. Yeah. One of the many duties that these officials have. Yeah. Many is right. Probably have to wear about three different stopwatches to yeah. conduct all the time counts. They got their hands going like it's a WWF uh, wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> Face off as you will get the stats for you, but Syracuse dominating it at this point. And there they are. Face off five to two. Gil Martin's three of four. And Fazy two of three. So Syracuse doing all right in that department. Ground balls hotly contested. Very even right now. Another face off. Put it in Syracuse's camp as Finn on the wing picked it up. And he's guarded by Tony Morgan. Finn drops Morgan. Nice move to get by a second man. He feeds Gil Martin. Oh, oh man. That was what a, a shot. Vicious shot, wasn't it? What a shot that was. It was headed right for his head. Watch what Shea does when, uh, when they're going to take the shot. They're going to give the ball to Gil Martin and watch when the shot and stop it right when he goes, when he takes the shot. Watch, watch Shea. Right here, stop. He is going to protect himself. He brings that stick up and the head goes down and that ball going about uh, 80 miles an hour. Nice job. Nice Good. job on the replay and a nice job by Shea. That was so hard, it was even hard Woo. to pick up in slow motion. It was, and I'll tell you, you don't know what it's like until you've been in there having guys like these guys throw it at you at 80 plus. Now Syracuse working with a man advantage. Gil Martin had to go off his stick. Cornell has oh, it. Oh, nice scoop. Good legs, too, for this big That'll red release. player. And a transition goal by the big red. 
Snow, number four. And the ball started out at the top and Snow is gonna be the recipient. The check that's- Tim Lee. Tim Lee, yeah. He gets the ball to Snow. Lee got crunched too as he released that pass. And DiLorenzo really had no opportunity on that. So Cornell gets the first goal here in the second quarter. It is a five to two score now with Syracuse leading. Everybody even, they got it in the box and were released before the goal. The goal would have done it anyway. So right now everybody's, even Steven. Cornell has yet to put uh, consecutive goals on the scoreboard and Roy Simmons is gonna take a timeout. He, now, he, why would you take a timeout so soon into the second well, quarter? The current. Kind of, well, we'll listen. Let's see if we can listen. I think they did it to, to stop the delay of game. To tell you the truth. But that's just from up here. I'll tell you why. I saw the official with the looked like a delay of game sign, and he started to walk over. And the, the bench official said that indeed they had called a timeout. I, I, I'm guessing. Richie Moran again huddled up with his team. It's unusual, Dale, I guess, to see a, a timeout so soon, just 40 seconds into the quarter after you just had the opportunity to talk things over with your team. If it saves you, however, loss of possession, which a delay a game would have done, I think that was the, I think that was the uh, the intent. But can a single possession be that costly well, so early in the quarter? If they've just scored one on you and it's five to two, you'd rather have it six to two than five to three. So I think sometimes when you sense that uh, you want to you want to get back in the game, indeed, some people have done it. Of course, they don't have TV timeouts. No, they <laughs> we don't make them take any. That's great. In case you were wondering who did coach here at Syracuse prior to Roy Simmons yeah. Sr. It was Lori Cox. Nice record. Program's been successful under everybody, hasn't it? Now the timeout is over and we're almost set to resume. We'll have a face off. Fazy's out there and uh, it was at Goldman. Goldman, for yeah, John Goldman. Cornell. Yep, 34, so. Outstanding high school football player. We'll see if we can get a shot and see what these guys are doing. Some guys, Fazy's supposed to be a little. A little on the quick side. By, by the way, Syracuse oh. has removed the uh, big stick on the wing. Yep. And they use Hans Schmidt there to open the game, but with face-off domination, they figured they don't need it. Let's see who this is. The ball is not about. There it is. It's Cornell's ball. Cornell ball. <laughs> Fazy unaccustomed to losing a face-off. Well, it got out on the wing there, and they didn't have a big stick. As you said, a little different strategy. Now Chris Reynolds for Cornell. Here's Snow. McCabe giving him some room. Nice matchup here. Look at McCabe playing with the pick man. So he's gonna go with the pick. Is he gonna switch off? He doesn't. Snow drives, but he forces Snow to pass and they're back out on top again. Reynolds. That's Matt Moore applying defense. Moore had a good assist, real fine assist earlier in the game. Burnham and Winship, the pairing now. McCabe is gonna stick with Snow. And they go to the top of the box again. We got the defensive minis in, that's Doyle, 23, playing defense. Lando gives it back, very deliberate now by Cornell. Here is Burnham and Snow. That's McCabe. Oh, nice jump. Nice jump. Boy, they really had that jump. That was no Lando, but you got to give the goalie credit. He was on top of that, DiLorenzo. When you say jump, it means all of a sudden he jumped out of the pack. Right, right? the guy just popped out, and, and, and DiLorenzo, watch, he did a great job with his body, but what he did was he hung the stick back, and he got it just up in time and rode it up out of the side of the goal. A great job. Third save for DiLorenzo. Syracuse leading 5-2. to two. Burnham 
Uh, he's trying to take Winship back and forth and get some movement. Syracuse defense, both the middies and the close defense playing excellently. Again, I say the defense maybe is not as spectacular as it's been in the past years, but pretty steady. Behind the back attempt by Gray, no good. A little unsettled. Snow. And there's DiLorenzo. That ball might not have been shot, but uh, redirected. McCarthy, nine, I think, just kind of tried to tap it, garbage it in from the, about five yards out in front of the crease. They retain possession. Winship working on Burnham again. Over the head. Forces a bad pass. Yep, and at midfield, there's the battle with Ryder. And kicked back. And still it goes, and looks like Ryder may come up with it. And the goalie's out, Shea. He's dumped. It's gonna <laughs> Pete Cornell ball. Shea got out of there at 20. Made a good hustle to get over there. 5'10, 170 for Shea, and he hustled over, but uh, they're gonna have to clear it. They're deep in their own end. Frank Marino, 24. Reno out of Stony Brook, Ward Melville High School. Here is the goalie, Shea. He's going to attract some attention. A little unsettled situation. They're looking for people in the hole. I'd say it's unsettled. Oh, nice again. DiLorenzo got a stick up on Lando, 22. The goalie came down. Nobody got in the hole on one side, and when Lando saw it, he got it and went, took a left-handed shot. And DiLorenzo, good vision tonight. DuBern Reed, Hans Schmidt come on. Number 15, number 36. Lando and Schmidt tying up in front. Burnham sending it back to Snow. There's the cutter. And there's DiLorenzo raking it in. <laughs> How far will he go? I hope not too far. Up to McCabe. Oh, what a pass to a to big stick. To the far stick. side to Schmidt. Can't hold on, but now he does. Yeah, he'll want to get rid of that pretty soon. Like now. Right. To DuBern Reed. Moving on Lando. Reynolds, 23, is going to come over. What's Reed trying to do? Allow Lockwood to come on the field. Now Kramer. Reed's job is done. He'll head toward the sideline as Kramer... With the quick feet. Sends behind to Archer. We got the first midfield back in. Marichek. One goal. Now Archer off his shoe tops. Archer on the spin away. Oh, Ooh. he was open. Nick Boynton was open. Boynton absolutely open. Popped off about five yards out in front on the right front of the crease as you look at it. Let's take a look at it here. Watch him pop off, 17. Ball's going to be behind. You're going to watch right up in here and see what happens. Watch him pop. There he is. Hold it. Open right there. And then you're going to see the pass and see what happens. But he did pop out. Pass too far out over the stick. But you can see when I say pop, that's what I mean. He popped right off the crease. And a long shot by Leahy, the defenseman, about 35 yards away. Upfield of Marichek. This should be exciting now. Marichek feeding the Patane. He overran it. Does a good job to get it back. Patane giving it up. Syracuse might want to settle. Do they get all their sticks in? Doyle made a good job of uh, recovering as he was knocked down. Here's Jamie Archer. He gets free. Archer scores. But then again, why wait? <laughs> you can see Jamie Archer change his uh, philosophy from feeder to scorer. Archer... They're changing up the, we'll see up here, see him, hold it for a second guys, you see people, they're trying to change right here, I thought they might try to settle it down in here and just wait for a second until they got the people in, but we'll see what happens. He decides he's got a goal in an area and he goes stick side and he beats him with a little hopper, nice job. That ball bounced right at the crease. Yeah. Schmidt 36, face off. Initially was won by Cornell, but Gil Martin gets it back. <laughs> or does he? Oh, he took a swipe at it. Well, they put it back down in the Cornell end and figured they'd have time to get back, and they're going to go all after Shea. Nine and a half to go in the first half. 
Marichek really hey, he. a good stick, is he? Oh, and there was our thump Finn ran right over Leahy. One of Syracuse's littlest players knock over Big Leahy. And it was legal. Well, Richie Moran doesn't like it. Official was right there. Burnham and Winship. Here they are again. See him out there on the crease. It's getting crowded. They don't look like it. Well, they're going to make some changes, and they're going to pop somebody in coming from the substitution area. And DiLorenzo came out and threw that ample body of his into somebody. You can see him changing. Now, I'll tell you right then, 13, Snopek had jumped in and was racing in toward the goal as Richie Moran uh, had some people, and he's bringing some subs off the back of the crease and then trying to sneak some people around. Right now, McCabe's trying to get the big stick down and does. And he gets it to John Barr. There is Barr back in the middle, and McCabe, and his shot is wide. Did Shea get a piece of that, the goalie? He did. That's a save. Boy, this is uh, number six for Shea. So much for settled offense. Now they're making use of the full field. Oh, uh, another Finn. hit. That's Dom Finn. Yeah, the designated hitter. Oh, look at that. The windship took the stick right away from his man. Think somebody's going to get Finn's number here pretty soon? Cornell offsides. No. Outside they go. Gil Martin. Well, he's going to attract a lot of attention. Finn's leveled a couple of people in the last few minutes. Jamie Archer. Now Ryder. Pace slows down. Very noticeably here. Finn is outside. Getting company for Goldman. <laughs> Whistle before Ward. the shot. Ward. Dom Finn, you know the guy who's been hitting everybody? Dave, I checked his height and weight. What do you think? Whatever it is, it's an exaggeration. 5'8", 158. No way. There he is, Dom Finn, a freshman out of Yonkers, excuse me, Yorktown, not Yonkers, Yorktown, 5'8", 158. Sure you get your high beams on tonight, Dale? Or? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Syracuse 6, Cornell 2. Well, I know they play lacrosse in Yorktown. I don't know about Yonkers. I think they play there, too. All over New York State. Matter of fact, I remember covering a high school championship down that way. Well, that was a poor, that was not a good decision by Lando to make the pass. He passed it to Bussey, and Syracuse man was right there when he looped the pass over, and they knocked it out of a Cornell stick, and it goes back Syracuse way with 6.58 left in the half. A 3-1 to one scoring advantage over these last three games. Lockwood giving it up to Holbrook. Boy, it's tough to make that pass with that big stick and make the catch. Now they got DiLorenzo involved in this. Oh, showing nifty moves. Yeah. <laughs> Look out. Here they go the other way. Oh, a flag. You got offside. So this will be a big red penalty. It gets very confusing up there on that line sometimes. I can hear, I hear Mr. Moran asking Mr. Miller, the official, what is the call? Mr. Moran is famous for his questions. In the meantime, Cornell packing it in again on defense. Who's in the slot there? That's uh, Andy Bolin. Well, they're man down now. Marichek gets to it first. Ball out of bounds, stays. Syracuse, so man down in the offsides call. Bolin is the point man, now Gil Martin, now Marichek. E even now. Archer and Ryder and Lockwood. That, Somebody jumped again, right up his back. Right, his Lando. right in front of Jim O'Hara. So that'll be a push. 
And you'll get a look, watch the back. Watch him go right up the back. That's 21, that's Bussy. Really a tremendous push, and we said right in front of the official. So another 30 seconds, so Syracuse will be man up again. Two man up situations here for Syracuse. This is their second in a row. And Gilmartin was ready to fire before he had the ball. Marichek has it stolen from him. Gilmartin gets it back. Syracuse leading 6-2, to two, and that shot is backed up by Ryder with 5.36 to play here in the first half. Well, we know he's playing attack now. He's... No, knocked down. Nice job. Tim Lee for Cornell. Shea, the goalie. Upfield and operating room, but he ran before he had it, did uh, Dan Alexander. So Alexander, the fast break kind of stopped. Cornell's uh, goal in this second quarter was a transition uh, kind of goal. Dave Edwards on now on the attack for the first time. Making changes. You, one of the things you can't always see is these guys change. They fake going over and try to draw somebody else with them, and then they stop and go back in the game. And the, the substitution is a big part of it, too. A great strategy down there to get the matchups they want personnel wise. Look at this matchup McCabe and Snow. <laughs> McCabe thought he'd help out there. It, it for takes a, a poke check at Lando. Oh, they popped him out off the. Yes. Nice job by Snow. Watch Snow. And he shot it over the prone Pat McCabe. Yeah, one of the things that number four, Snow, is going to pop out right, right here. See him? Whoop, let me just check that. Right here. He pops out over there. Now the closest guy, hold it right there, has slid over, but he's not going to be able to get on that stick, and you're going to see what happens as he makes a move and just... Puts it right in the top, even with some help. DiLorenzo slid over, couldn't make the stop. Goal number three for Cornell, 6-3. And Cornell's outscored Syracuse here in the second quarter now. Two to one. Man coming on is Amaya. Now Ryder, we're at the 4-15 mark. And Syracuse. Failure to advance. Yep. One thing we look at, by the way, Syracuse has had four man up opportunities and they have not been able to take advantage of any of them. And that is a big difference right here as the ball all stayed, kept in. There's Lando. Yep, Patane, Patane on him. Nice job by Patane. <laughs> David Patane, part of that defensive midfield group with Doyle and Moore. And that's Doyle right there coming off with him. Nice job by the defensive midfield. Patain the big stick. You only have one on that, generally, on the defensive midfield now. There's talk of eliminating another big stick next year, so you'd only have, generally, of course, your defenseman with defensive sticks. Here's Ricky Kramer. Long pass. Holbrook handles it cleanly. Now Winship. Kramer back. Stay on side. Get the ball to Lockwood, and they'll get Winship over, and Kramer over. Lockwood dealing to Amaya and now to Jamie Archer. Archer sending outside to Ryder and now Kramer. I think at this point it's important for Syracuse to get another goal. Well, they only have one in the second quarter. That's right. They have slowed down offensively. Here comes Ryder working on Alexander. Nice save. Amaya is trying to hustle to the ball. Did a good job. Lockwood's going to get a shot at it. Both but guys a on a push, yeah. So red push, white ball. And you get into a situation like this, you're pushing. Oh, there, that's the push. So Syracuse. Trying to convert. Freddie Amaya seeing a lot of playing time in this game. Well, they're really uh, 
trying to get that hanging stick, and Amaya's doing a nice job of protecting it. Now we're under three minutes to go, and here comes Kramer. Going to the left hand. That was a screen shot. Yes, it was. They set the screen up, and uh, incidentally, that was Schneid, 36 on Amaya. Archer, Archer with a nifty shot. Marichek. And that was Dave Schneid coming up with a loose ball. Now that transition by Cornell. Nice check. Alexander is hit. Great check by Kramer. Watch it. I don't know if you see it in the replay. We won't see it, but boy, what he did is he just came up and he hit that stick right up, drove it into his own, the, the opponent's face mask, and then the ball dropped out. It was a nice check, one-handed. So Alexander really checked on that. Oh, There's Marichek. He looks like he wants to score, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> the rebound taken by Ryder is trouble. Now he has it. We're at the two-minute mark. Ricky Kramer with the spin to the left hand, smothered out at the point. Somebody's lost a stick. It's Marichek. High fly out of bounds goes Cornell way. One goal will put Cornell in it. I'll tell you right now, Richie Moran will be psyched if they can go in at 6-4. Right now, the leading scorers in the game, John Snow with a pair of goals for Cornell. Matt Ryder had the first two for Syracuse. Syracuse has 10 more shots, 21 to 11 at this point with a three-goal lead. Good check from behind. That's going to be no possession push. It'll stay Cornell. Mike Doyle. Yeah, that's Lando down. There's the, the break there. He hung his stick. There was the check, and there, there we go. There's the push. So they'll retain possession. No time served. And it'll be Snow with the ball, the leading scorer for Cornell against Syracuse's best takeaway defenseman. Popping out from that crease. In a crowd. And Steve Gray gets the goal for Cornell and the Big Red back in it now at six to four. So Cornell's making a game of it. Six four, Syracuse still in the lead. Gray, 44, is gonna pop out in a second. You can let it run. They take the ball behind. Now what you can't see is up in the left of the crease, but they got guys stacked up. And now watch the ball and watch him pop out. Right there, hold it. Uh, you gotta bring him a little in, a little bit more, guys. There we go, right, right here. He gets the ball, he popped out to the right, and then he continues. And DiLorenzo can't stop it high, so it's right back to a two goal game with a lot of time left. Cornell in possession of the ball. Syracuse takes it away with one minute to go here in the second half, uh, second quarter. And a violation Failure against advance. the Orange Men. We gotta get back on defense now. Cornell doing a better job now in the faceoff department. Yeah, they've come along. Lando, 22. Reynolds, 23, cuts to the crease. They've got three players in front. Trying to set up the screen for Lando. Oh, he's alone. Yeah. Oh, oh, good save. That was right on. Rebound to Burnham. Taken down by Snow. He hits the deck. Good job by Winship to DiLorenzo. And the safety of the crease. Now he comes out. He's going to have to get it up. Oh, poor pass. Or and that's going to cost back. Syracuse getting a little rattled here defensively. Richie Moran wants a timeout to set up a play. Six four. Syracuse has had the momentum taken right away from them, and also four man up opportunities not able to cash in on. Look at the faceoffs, eight to four now. But the last of the couple of faceoffs have gone Cornell way. Some penalties have hurt Syracuse. Now Dale, strategically now. What do you suppose Syracuse will try to do on defense with 27 seconds to go? Well, you know, you can't go, you can't 
sink in too far, then you're going to screen your own goalie. I think they're going to want to play good team defense. Let's see who's got the ball. Try to check the stick. Try to check the ball. Get the passing lanes. Don't let them pass. Them. Make that pass. They've been getting to the crease. Do you ever give a, a team a different look defensively in a situation like this? Well, Syracuse generally uses a man-to-man -man defense, so I, you know, I don't. They might use something like an inbounds defense. They, they possibly could, but you don't want to give up a cheap goal. And uh, with 27 seconds, obviously the pressure's on Syracuse, but that's not a lot of time. Cornell's got to be able to work the ball around, but they also got to get a shot. They may want to get off more than one shot, so. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but they have clawed their way back to the fact that uh, one goal would, I think, really change the momentum. I think on that uh, gentleman's shirt there, we just saw the uh, the key operating word for this season. After three peat, it's for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see where snow is. Snow is going left behind as the goalie sees him or would mention him Syracuse wishes Ball way out on top behind. yeah way out on top let's see Lando has it number 22 that's the time remaining in the half Lando looked to go one on one and come off the screen jump on Doyle Doyle's with him now it's snow with McKay and 10 seconds he's looking for that high screen, screen yeah he's looking for a screen they pop off Here's the fire, and it's high and backed up with four seconds to go. You see him. He popped off. Bussy popped off. Good oh, job. McKay broke it up, and the half will come to an end. Good job by Cornell here in the second quarter to get back into it. And we have a game on our hands as we hit the half with Syracuse leading Cornell 6-4. to four. We'll be back with the Coors Light halftime highlights after this. We're in the Carrier Dome. We're at the half of tonight's game. It is Syracuse leading Cornell 6-4. to four. Hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, is he just can't wait to show you the Coors Light <laughs> halftime highlights because instead of the usual litany of goals and the great saves, we have got some great hits. Well, I'll tell you, lacrosse is definitely a body contact sport. And uh, if you don't believe it, why don't you check these highlights out? This is going to be Burnham from... Cornell, watch the hit here on number 22, Lockwood. What a shot. Down for the count, separated the ball. Cornell came up, but that's what lacrosse is all about. And then they kind of pay him back. Watch Finn, 5'8", 158. He's going to come in your picture right here, and he's going to put a lick on Leahy right there and take him down. And Syracuse came up with the ball after that. So lacrosse, definitely a contact sport. And late in the half, Cornell got back in it as they ran off uh, three unanswered goals. And here is Snow finding Gray. Yeah, he popped out on, the, uh, on that uh, real close to the goal, about five yards out. He popped off on the right-hand side, and that brought him right back into it, and only a two-goal difference right now. In fact, many of Cornell's goals were of that variety, where a man would just pop out, receive the pass, and shoot. One of the telling statistics there, Syracuse 0 for 4 on man up. That's not something, obviously, not very good. You don't have any. You really like to cash in on those. I think shots in Syracuse's favor, uh, ground ball's pretty even. Uh, one of the things that I think is really going to tell is the momentum. Did Cornell pick it up? And if they did, if they come back and get that uh, uh, second half face off, then uh, that could really be a telling uh, telling momentum uh, indicator for, for Cornell. All right, only one goal by Syracuse in the second quarter. We'll be back with the second half face right after this. Here is the third quarter faceoff. Syracuse and Cornell, 6 4 lead for the Orangemen over the Big Red. Dave Cohen along a Dale Drive Pulcher. Syracuse wins the face. Fazy, Lockwood, now Kramer coming in, giving up the shot opportunity for Marichek. We have an official who went down as Marichek went down. And Lockwood gets it back. Lockwood to Nick Boynton, who came on late in the first half. Seeing action here early in the second. Nice spin move by Boynton. Up top to Ryder. Pulled down by Syracuse. Ricky Kramer nearly brought down. He fires and a save by Shea. Good save. Real nice save. Be a slash. However, on Cornell. Andy Boland sent into the game now. Here's the move. Just to beat him out front. Now they slide over. What a 
took a real shot. Nice low, but uh, not able to control the rebound, and then there was a slash. So Syracuse will have man up number five. They have not converted yet. Ricky Kramer, I think, has handled the ball more in this game than any game I've, I've seen him play. Maracek sneaking in. That's his first behind the backer. And pipe. from a tough angle, Archer missing. But there's Maracek. They got the pipe. This is another man up, right? Yes. Yeah, they got a whole minute here, so they're going to be patient. One shot off. Haven't scored yet, have they? No, they're zero for four. There's the second behind the back. And Maracek from outside. Bolin on the backup. Shot number two in this flurry. Man up. Now they're going to make a little change. Bolin's up at the point. And Bolin's shot is saved by Shea, who comes out. And fires upfield, intercepted on a beautiful scoop at midfield by Winship. But his uh, pass upfield is deflected, and that goes against the man who threw it. Winship shaking his head in disbelief. John Desco holding his head in disbelief. Well, those are the things that, you know, when you come out, you want to get right back into your game and not make the silly mistakes. And um, But that's the game of lacrosse. There's Burnham, nice change of direction, but he couldn't shake free of Winship. From behind, it's Snow now. Snow has McCabe with him. There's Burnham. I kind of isolate for Burnham. The cutter who went through was Bussy. And here comes Burnham. And there's the cutter again. It's Bussy knocked out of his stick by Patain. The rebound is taken in by DiLorenzo. He leaves for Holbrook, 43. Two and a half minutes into the third quarter, 6-4 Syracuse. The burn Reed has it now. And here's Maracek. Leahy on him. Against Leahy. Maracek scores. That is identical to that matchup earlier in the first quarter he, with Leahy and Maracek. He took, took the same shot, too. When he gets, when he, he's going one-on-one -on -one with Leahy, and just before he shoots, we're going to stop it. Stop it right there. And you see now where his stick is, and you can see where the defensive stick is. So watch where he takes the shot from. Stick up high. He takes it down low, sidearm shot right in for seven goals for Syracuse. Seven to four is the score now. It's a midweek game, part of a, a day night of action in Syracuse. The uh, Syracuse Chiefs playing earlier today. They won by a lacrosse score of 15 to eight over Rochester. Now, here's more of a baseball score as Syracuse leads at seven to four <laughs> against Cornell. Well, you know. They went offside. Cornell was offside, and they stayed offsides as 21 went back. Was that in and Buffy. out of the box? What was the call here? No, that's they, no, had, Let me see. They might have two penalties. No, offsides is the only one. But Bussy 21 was offside, and he was trying to stay onside. Then after they called the penalty, he just went over, and that's the smart thing to do. You got to try to outnumber them and knock the ball down. They don't get that opportunity. So another man-up opportunity for Syracuse. Man up opportunity number six, and they are zip for five at this point. Bolin seeing more action now here in the third quarter. Ryder had the first two goals of the game by Syracuse. Tommy Gilmartin is on now. 7 4 is the Syracuse lead. Gilmartin sent it on the behind the back. They went high on him. They have gone high a couple of times on Shea. Still man up for Syracuse. They're 
even now. So, zero for six in the man up department as Syracuse is now gonna go even up with Cornell. Ryder, knocked out of his stick nicely on the defense of Dave Schneid. There's the hustling Gil Martin, but he kicked it out. That's a little bit of frustration there on Gil Martin and Ryder as they couldn't combine to come back up with that ground ball and it was off a Syracuse stick. Shea's had a fine game in the Nets for Cornell. He has 10 saves. DiLorenzo with five. Cornell is down seven to four. On the move now is Joe Lando. Lando is a junior from Corning East. Here's the senior, Snow. Snow is from Auburn. See him using that, like that. Here's the screen. picket fence. He yeah. ran around a whole picket fence. Now Sends it back to Lando. Had a 1 4 1, four guys on the crease. Well, they found Bussy in there. They go back to Bussy, and DiLorenzo was waiting for his shot. But his outlet is stolen away by Lando. Bussy eludes a big check. That'll go out of bounds. Swipe at it. No good by Jon Snow. Three goal lead for Syracuse. 9.54, long pass over to McCabe. Lockwood was streaking on. He wanted the lead pass. Now in the middle of the field, here comes Ricky Kramer. Here is Lockwood. Back he goes to Kramer. Kramer's been like the point guard today. Well, they, they've had a couple of these. Tom Finn hustling to it. And Desco on the bench. They, well, they don't want him to waste. Coach yeah. points to him to get it in get there. Get some shots off on these guys, I think is what he wants to say. Get some, let's get some, force some action. Now Lockwood with a left-handed shot. Not his real hard one. You know, the idea is not to take bad shots, but if you can't get the ball in there, if you're playing way out, you're not going to take those long shots. Get it in. Syracuse dominating in all the statistical departments, shots, ground balls, and faceoffs. Three goal lead at this point. Well, that's still a shaky. Marichek from outside. And they going uh, back to that zone defense. Was it, was it Lockwood? It was Lockwood. It's Lockwood, yeah. So used to seeing them on this side with the left hand, they put him on that side and he cranked the right hand. One of the things they talked about was the fact that Syracuse in losing the people they did last year, they didn't have a real hard shot. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna pop. Watch, Lockwood's gonna be out and he's gonna just stand out there, take a couple of steps and nobody able to get on the stick and he goes high. That was the laser right there. And here's yeah. the face one by Fazy. He goes to the right hand, gives it up. Marichek behind the back, they feed it back to Lockwood. Oh, it's deflected. Syracuse gets the rebound with the rider. Behind Archer. He'll go on the offensive himself. Too many people out there for him to run through them. Cornell coming back. Morgan up ahead. Look at McCabe. McCabe screened his man off. Now here's uh, Steve Gray with it. Gray pays the price. Finn got him down again. And he oh, gets the look. pass. Tom Finn, boy, they want a piece of him, I'm sure. Finn with good balance, nice feed for Archer. Now that, this shows you how tiring it gets. For, you get guys like Finn, they've been sprinting up and down the field. Now they're, he's getting into it a little bit with number two from Cornell. Say, Morgan. Whatever, ha whatever happened to that idea we had of putting a pedometer on somebody's foot and measuring how many miles they run in a game? I know, and I think that'd be a great idea. You're gonna get a double it's, shot. Oh, nice, nice idea there by Kramer to go low. Well, they're putting the pressure on now this quarter. They are not fooling around. Marichek. <laughs> now that one looked like something from last season. 
Marichek on Leahy, it's, he's done this a couple times. Now he goes around and gets that arm up. And watch, now watch where his stick is. Hold it right there. See, now he's got his stick right here. Leahy's got to try to guard him and see what happens with the stick in a second as he goes around. Now he takes the stick back that way and rolls inside. Now he's got the move. And right there, he goes down, two, three. Third time he put it by him. But the stick is so difficult to control, Marichek can put it up and take the shot, he can do it down low, and he faked Shea three times and put in goal number nine for Syracuse with 7.32 left. And he has worked hard for each of those three goals, uh, getting by Leahy each time, but that time he had to come up with about three fakes to beat the goalie Shea. So Tom Marichek has just given Syracuse a nine to four lead. Watch how close Marichek comes to being to in the, the crease. crease. Well, you got your crease right, right here. Let's see what he does. That's the yellow line. It's not that right. It's not Off. the maroon one. No, he's all right. Ball was in before he got hit into the crease. As long as the ball crosses the plane, you can roll right into that cage afterwards. Well, the, uh, the month of April has been a good one for Syracuse. They've been here in the Dome throughout. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights come into test Syracuse next. Then after that, road games, right? Penn and Massachusetts. Right. And uh, I think a tough situation for... Oh, Penn, another, Penn, Penn is Penn's a home here, game, yeah. yeah. But uh, Syracuse has to continue to win, obviously. I mean, nobody wants to lose, but they've lost two games, and that... You want to continue. They've lost to North Carolina and Hopkins, and uh, they don't play teams that are ranked ahead of them as they go down the down their schedule. So they want to make sure they make the most of what they got. Hope some other teams lose and they can move up in the rankings. Well, that last goal by Tom Marichek really reminded me of the spectacularness of last season. Something that may never again be seen in yeah. lacrosse. And uh, maybe we we're all a little bit spoiled by that. It is 9 to 4 with 7.32 to go. We're in the third quarter. Faceoffs at 11 to 4 now. So Syracuse lost the last couple before the second half, but they're back on track. And Fazy and Gil Martin. He was out there now. Gil Martin. Cornell got it yep. to six to four. Gil Martin. Man, how does he win them and pick them up so quick? Marichek in, and the shot no good by Archer. Well, they're really putting the offensive pressure on Cornell. Moving pick. Illegal pick. So it'll go Cornell ball. On the dodge down the sideline. There's Lando. He's been very active tonight. He's going to be picked up by Doyle. Lando is doubled by Doyle and Patain. The ball's coming back the other way on the stick of Mike Doyle. On the line. Cornell ball. So Doyle on the line. The defensive midi not able to get rid of the ball before he gets called for being out of bounds. Syracuse 9, Cornell 4. We're in the third quarter. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher, our super sports coverage of Syracuse lacrosse, the three-time defending national champion Orange men against the Big Red. The 75th meeting. Burnham behind. Now McCabe on. I got beat. Snow, he got beat. He feeds the crease. And there is Holbrook. Oh. Hacken and the Hewen in there with that big stick. And Patain in pursuit. See now there's a, there's some hustle. They, they're getting a little little pushy down there. Both guys, both teams I should say. But did you see when when he got beat, when McCabe got beat, he just turned around and said, I got beat, pick him up. And they did a nice job of picking Snow up. Oh, coming over the top from behind. Winship. Winship on the patented move. 
Pat McCabe. Winship played to the crowd. Limping toward the sideline is Joe Lando. Joe Lando looks like he sprained an ankle. Keith Reitenbach, one of the assistant coaches for Richie Moran, along with Sam Carpenter. There's the goalie comparison. Shea having more than twice as many shots directed at him. And accounts for his higher save rate. Dean Lorenzo doing a fine job. Jamie Archer. He's, uh, he's waiting for somebody to jump him. He's just one-on-one. -on -one. Good job by Shea. He got the stick on it. And in transition here is the big red. Back with it is Benson. You know, now here's these guys, you talk about midfielders running. They just sprinted about 100 yards before. Now they got to go back and do it again. 200 yard wind sprints. Oh, a little bit high. They seem to be going high on Shea a lot. That was Ryder. 36 shots on Shea. Five saves. Yeah, you know, you talk about speed in football for the 40 yard dash, Dale. And how many times does a guy actually get 40 yards to run in football? That's right. These lacrosse players are going 40, 50, 60 yards sometimes at a, at a clip. And then they just turn around and have to do it again. John Barr is on number 30. They might try to get it to him. Now he cuts in toward the crease. As Gil Martin starts his move. Tried to get it to... Dom Finn, he threw it high to Finn. Now here comes Marichek. Oh, he whipped it backwards. They go up top. Low shot coming by Barr. Rebound shot, save Shea. I lost it. This would be a nice mess. Oh, what a shot. What a shot that was. Boy, I, when that ball goes down, the defensemen are told to clean off the crease, get everybody out of there. So watch, there's the save, great save, but just too hard to stop. Now everybody's out, the ball is out down on the ground. Now watch the guys in the red and the white, everybody's gonna start cleaning off. There's a push, there's a push, there's a swipe, and it was just an over the head shot. Don Finn. Finn. Man, he just vacuumed it up and fired it in, completely blind to the cage, and he has his second goal and one assist. Marichek's gonna be out, by the way, for a minute for unnecessary roughness, so they will be down a man, and we've got McCabe out in the face-off X with the big stick. Let's see what he does with it. Plays a little defense after the ball's down. Finn has a little shamrock on his uh, helmet. Now Cornell is down 10 to four. We have four minutes to go in this third quarter. Syracuse asserting itself again in the face-off department. One of two in the man up department for Cornell. This is their third opportunity. Lando's coming back on. He limped off moments ago with an ankle problem, it looked like, and he's got the ball now. Back he goes to Snow. Cornell, number 14 in the country. Nice what? slides. Nice job defensively for Syracuse, man down. See, somebody's got to play two men eventually. That's the idea. And if you can pass the ball quickly enough, you should be able to. Now they're even. Burnham. Shot deflected. And the Cornell backup keeps it in their possession. Marichek back in. They send another defensive man over, so they're all even. Syracuse led in this game 5-1 to one at the end of one quarter. And it was 6-4 to four at the half. Talk about the defense. They have blank Cornell here in the third quarter. Didn't they do that to Hobart as well? Yeah, it seemed to be a kind of a similar situation. Nice move. Nice check. Ricky Kramer. 13. Did a great job, Kramer. Holbrook does a good job of giving it up. Now they go in the middle to Ricky. Good uh, check. But Kramer gets it back. And does he get it in? No. Shea with another fine job in the nets. There is Cornell with Morgan racing it about 60 yards. There's a sprint. Still with it. High shot. 
Oh, DiLorenzo came out, and the two Syracuse defenders, McCabe and Holbrook, knocked it into the empty cage as they battled one another for the ball. They kicked it in, and it all counts. DiLorenzo actually did a nice job. He's, he's going to come out on Gray. Is it Gray? Yeah, 44. Now watch DiLorenzo. He's committed now. Get up on the stick. So he knocks him down. Now the ball dribbles out, and there it takes a hop. Now watch what happens. It's off of McCabe's stick. So it's 10-5. Someday they'll be able to laugh about that one. Not right now. Oh, somebody moved. Syracuse moved first, so that'll be Cornell Ball. That's a face-off for Cornell. One of the rare violations committed by a Syracuse face-off men. Cornell has uh, Kevin McCarthy in the game now, number nine, extra attacker. Big Red trying to get back some scoring, some offensive momentum. Off of McCabe's stick, he got a stick up on the pass of Snow. De Lorenzo calling out the defenses and making that save. Some fresh bodies on now. Chad Snowpack for Cornell. He's number 13. Flag going to be a slash. And they're going to warn De Lorenzo to stop talking, I think. Yep. Somebody was barking at the officials about a flag that was thrown. So another man up opportunity now for Cornell. Fourth. One of four. Or one of three, obviously, at this point. This is the fourth. John Desco talking with Pat McCabe on the sideline. So now this is when they can claw their way back in this game. With 10 to 6, this is an important man up situation. Nice job. Di Lorenzo blocked it. You couldn't see where it was. Stratton has come on now, number 31. Di Lorenzo out of the cage, and Holbrook saves the day. Push against Cornell. So Syracuse man down will have to clear this. This will be interesting. What a job by Holbrook to save the day as DiLorenzo was caught outside. Well, they don't fool around. They got that up. I don't know where Syracuse got anybody in position. Here's Kramer. Look at his legs when he moves. Ricky waits for Archer to come on. Now Don Finney has it. Lockwood cutting in front of him. Finn faked himself down to the turf. Screwed himself right in. Half a minute to go. Here comes Lockwood. Oh, good, good job, save. Finn. And a fine outlet as well. And transition for Cornell with Connolly. Good job, DiLorenzo, to intercept the pass. Now 15 seconds to go. Ryder with time. Patane. With 10 seconds. Nice shot for David that big Pertain. stick. Yeah. Well, he unleashed a hard one, and they say it's Cornell ball. DiLorenzo didn't know it for a second. He was kind of standing up by the restraining line because they'll take a long shot. DiLorenzo comes out to play it as the third quarter comes to an end. Syracuse allowing Cornell just one goal here in the Proceeding 15 minutes, and the Orange lead it 10 to 5 after 3. Super Sports bringing you Syracuse lacrosse, and the Orange men take a 10 to 5 lead into the fourth quarter of the 75th meeting with Cornell. I'm Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher. We're delighted you're with us. One Cornellian is down on the ground. Maybe Joe Lando. 
Well, he's been doing some sprinting. It is Lando, and they have been moving up and down. As we saw after the first quarter, the officials will do a little stick checking. Burnham after from the third uh, quarter. Cornell gave up his cross. And this is Archers from Syracuse. They've also checking. And uh, as we said, they doing a couple of checks a game. Last 15 minutes. Let's check the individual scoring leaders in the game. Now check with three goals for Syracuse. Snow and Gray with two apiece for Cornell. And team-wise, here's how it looks after three, Dale. One of four, man up Syracuse, zero for six. Saves 16 to seven with uh, Shea has come up with a couple of good ones. Ground ball, Syracuse starting to edge out there and the face-offs, obviously Syracuse uh, two to one in that department. And once again, they become more important, the face-offs too, as we head into this fourth quarter. 10 to five, five goal lead. This is the place you want to really put them away. See if you can get a quick goal. And it's Fazy on the face. Well, he, he just did a nice job. He clamped it, then turned around and got his hips into the man, blocked him off, and then came up with the ball, gave it to his offense, and uh, he says, I I'm out of here, and Freddie Amaya comes in. Tommy Marichek feeding it outside now to Ricky Kramer. Kramer giving it up. Shooting room in the slot for Ryder. Syracuse a double back up that time. You know, he really looks, Shane really looks tough on the low shots. I noticed some people have been going high. Maybe they got a little frustrated and starting to go low now, but he has seemed to be really tough on the low shots. Well, he is built low to the ground. Here is Ryder on the move. Working hard into a crowd to Archer. That was not a strong shot. Shea has it and is forced to come out. And he whips it way down field. That's a cheap. And it's out. And Syracuse will have to clear it, but did a nice job of just getting rid of the ball. He did not want to turn it over in his end, and so he got it up and put it down in Syracuse and said, you guys clear it. We are 51 seconds into the fourth quarter, and Syracuse has a 10 to five lead. All open in the midfield is Lockwood. Archer and a couple of fakes and a score. That's Nick Boynton who is camped out. Nice passes, really nice passes. That's the kind of thing that when they talk about of old, the crisp, nice, sharp passing, and they're looking to Archer, to Boynton. Boynton says, nah, I don't want to go in the crease. I see somebody coming. He steps out. Nice job. Wide side as the Shea could not defend all 36 square feet. Syracuse comes up with 11, 11th goal. Those are those diagonal passes, Dale, that are so nice to see. Yeah, well, you get people watch. running, and, and, and you go the opposite direction. The defense is gone, and Cornell up with a face. Yeah, a rare one. Dan Alexander won it from Gil Martin and lost the ball. Hein Schmidt with that long stick. Nice job of the defensive man. And Winship on a one-bouncer oh. for DiLorenzo. Uh, they get the defensive middies in with Patain and Doyle and Moore as they check in. Richie Moran. He's a do or die guy. Chris Reynolds is sent into the game. <laughs> you hear Richie say, don't shake your head. Yeah. He, uh, he gets every last ounce out of those players. Reynolds changing directions on Matt Moore. Finding Snow. Moore is with him. Lando has been gutsy coming back uh, from a leg injury earlier. Lots of movement now on this offense. They were stacked up. Now they're going to stack up on the. Burnham on McCabe. 
Boy, they're, they're, there's a fantastic amount of movement of this Cornell offense, and they looking for cutters. Who's going to be the pop-out man? Step for step, Syracuse stays with him, and that shot is smothered, but Cornell's going to get it back. Well, that was not a good shot. There was a man nice up in the save. front, Lando, and they catch it from behind, and the score. Did that go in no. or not? I don't think it went in. On the outside of the cage, uh, Di Lorenzo tested and uh, did a nice job. We'll check Di Lorenzo out as he gets there. There's the shot down. He got a stick, bounced back out. Now they get it out again. Low shot, stop, down on his knees, has to get back up. High, now watch, they caught that one. Another one on the outside. On the outside, Di Lorenzo knew it. So Syracuse, man down. 12.20 to go in the game. Syracuse leading it 11 to 5. Here's Lando with room. Nice save. He got down low on that and then bounced it and he followed with the body, rolled it up over the cage. There's the man up. One for four for Cornell. Oh, chest save. And it is Winship holding it out. Nice change of direction. Yeah. Nice pass. You better get it out of there. There they go. Patane up to Doyle, deflected away from him. Picked up by Tom Marachek. He really came out. Oh, nice fake. They get the defensive middies off and some other people in now. Syracuse going to settle it down a little bit. With 11 and a half to go, Kramer ducks in, ducks out. Tom Finn is back on with Gil Martin and Kramer. Gil Martin behind to Ryder. Here comes Ryder. He gets a stick right around the neck. Sends back out to Finn. Finn has probably had his best game. Ryder, move, Ryder moves all over. He plays attack. He plays midfield. And he rents trucks. <laughs> <laughs> nice slow shot. Oh, rebound. Double Kramer. save. Who's got it? Interference. Let's see if we can get a look at the goalie's perspective on this. Sweep down, look at that. Rode it up, couldn't control it, went off to the left. There's the other shot. See how he stayed right on it, Shea checking right where the ball was going and then he got it out, but there was an interference call on the big red, so. Finn up top, he cranks, he scores! Don Finn. I think that they definitely uh, wanted to go high here. He has been so hot. Shea has been so hot, especially low. He's looked very good. And of course, the percentage are gonna go in, but watch, high, stick off the stick side, not the stick side, just the other side. Not able to get that hand across and goal number 12 for Syracuse. Tom Finn gets his third goal of the year of the game, and that's a career high for him. He's played a heck of a game, hasn't he? He has. Maybe one of our Pepsi candidates? Who knows? Uh, very, very definitely. Ricky Kramer back for Syracuse. Do you feel the wind in here? <laughs> it's not only cold, there's a, there's a wind chill factor in the dome. High bouncer. Leahy's in trouble. Ryder's, Ryder's all, over. all over. Good ride by Ryder. Look at the big, big sticks. Oh, nice pickup by Lockwood. He's strong, isn't he? He's a freshman, right? Here he comes. Lockwood feeds a crease. And Ryder tried to shovel it in. The rebound by Boynton, no good. He's getting three and four shots off at a flurry here. And pretty decent ones. Well, that's a push. Yeah, they took a run at Lockwood there. The way somebody bounced off him, it reminded me of the guy who used to wear 22. Yeah. Marichak hurt a little bit, I think, as he, on that push. It's like his left ankle. Yeah, he's a little bit of pain. Freeman's in the game, I believe. Yep, Todd Freeman, number six. 
Medical attention for Tom Marichek coming. Cornell. Timeout taken by Cornell. Oh. We have 9.43 to go in this game. And Syracuse appears to have a comfortable 12-5 lead, but this man is not comfortable. Tom Marichek. Dr. Baker, perhaps take a look at the franchise. At the, <laughs> at the extremity in question. Well, at this point, 9.43 with a seven goal lead, Syracuse has been playing in, I think, inspired. And one of the things you run into when you play Syracuse, Dave, is the depth. One of the things we talked about is they, they just keep coming on. Should be wearing your knee pad, thing, guys. Yeah. Ice it for right now. Don't laugh, but I'm just icing for right now. Yeah, they're looking at the left knee. Somebody said you should be wearing that knee pad. Uh, he agreed. Okay. So. It, it is a body contact sport, and sometimes you come in contact with the carpet. Sometimes you come in contact with uh, somebody else. What do you suppose is the most painful position to play in this game? Oh. Is it goalie? Is it attack? Midfield? I would have to say the midfielders probably, since they generally handle the ball the most and play the most defense uh, when they're not replaced by the defensive middies, would probably be the guys that have to take the most shots. Now those are the ones, Dave, you don't notice until after you take a shower. Then you got welts all over your back. <laughs> Tough game. I knew there was a couple of reasons why I never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> One is welts. The other. <laughs> Carpet burns. Carpet burns, yeah. Mud in your eyes. Not here. Not here, no. One of the things that uh, we miss from being out, outside, but not, not very often. Ricky Kramer has been on the go all game long. Now, did you see the bottom of that banner? Did you see the breeze? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw it. It's coming out of one of those vents as uh, Tom Marichek flashes a smile. Hollywood. Let's see what we got here as everybody comes back out. Everybody's all even. 9.43, seven goal lead, 12-5 for the Orange. See those guys walking with the, the camera there in the upper corner of the picture? I'd yeah. Have, I'd have a fence in front of me if yeah. I were them. Yeah, yeah. Well, they wisely don't let people sit behind the goals. Ryder on Matt Lady. Ryder feeding into the crease here to Lockwood. Kramer picks it up. Nice defense by Morgan, number two. Nice move by Kramer. He was on the line. Stepped out. Morgan, number two from Cornell, did a nice job of locking that stick down, causing the ground ball. Well, the question now, Dale, is can Cornell uh, get any kind of offense mounted here? They have five goals in the game. Their low output this year has been eight. One was in a win over Harvard. One was in a loss to Yale. But they've been held to five. We have nine minutes left. Burnham intended for Gray. Yeah, he didn't know he wanted to take the shot when he got pushed by the, the plane of the goal there just before he tried to get the ball to Gray. 44. Watch him. He's going to take the shot, but he says, oops, a little bit too much pressure. I can't make the angle, so he tries to dish it off to Gray. Nice move by Burnham. I didn't notice the intense brace on Gray's knee either. It's Now Gil Martin will take a run at him. Well, they better advance it. He's resourceful, though. Whips it to Holbrook, who has a little bit of trouble. Can they get it across? They just beat the clock. And then they throw it away. I'll tell you one thing, Cornell has succeeded in stretching this game out. Yeah. Go, Tommy. These rules, uh, the new rules, well, they're not new this year, but from last year with, with the time to get the ball across really puts a premium on the conditioning of your team and the ability to run, run, run. Feels like the game's been played in short bursts. Very staccato quality to it. Shea. To Leahy. 
Leahy throws it over the head of Lando. There have been a number of those, not necessarily by Leahy, but both teams have had some poor passing. Cornell maybe a little bit more. This is a young team, not in, if you look at the years they are in college, they're not young, but in experience. And uh, Richie Moran uh, done a good job as usual with them. They overshot Finn that time and plays getting a little bit sloppy. Morgan picks it up with Barr. A loose ball bouncing. Cornell having trouble hey, getting a rhythm now. Mike Levine. Yep. What a check. He broke his stick. Broke the head right off the stick. Is that what it I was? Thought, well, I thought. No, well, I guess he knocked not. Knocked his glove off, too. That's maybe by the Lorenzo glove. has it. I thought I saw part of the head go. Not true. John Barr by Morgan. they call an offside. Cornell appears to be offside. As you look down there, it's a tough call to make. Not that the rule is so complicated, but with your sprinting and you're trying to get in position and watch what happens as an official, it's a difficult, can be a very difficult call. And they will say that there was no possession at the time. I don't see anybody heading to the area, so it'll just be a Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go. Syracuse leading at 12 to 5. Nick Boynton intended for Marichek. He's back in the game. Look at Schneid. He's a freshman, a defenseman out of West Genesee High School. He's going to. You see now he is wearing that uh, brace on his left knee. Yeah, protective a pad. pad. Yeah. Cornell Dale has scored only one goal in the second half. Yeah, they've really done a tremendous job defensively on him. 22 minutes and just one goal. Oh, that was right on. Yeah. Where was DiLorenzo? He was out playing, doing a little riding. And uh, however, McCabe shot across and intercepted it. Archer. Boynton in a tough spot. As he fed Tim Corcoran. Paul Cannon coming down now. Syracuse getting new, fresh people in the game. There's the look to, to the crease and just couldn't control it and get it in and uh, in the crease. But pushed there, so it'll stay Syracuse. 